Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Sunday evening update on this Sunday, June 14th. And I'm your host, Justin Lowe. This is, of course, the program where you get all of your news and views of life extension from around the world. And we chat with researchers and advocates most nights when we have the show. Last show, of course, we had a little news and review what's going on at the Institute lately. Uh, that was back on May 31st. I apologize. We haven't had too many guests on the show as of late. A little bit of a light schedule. I think maybe we're heading into summer. Uh, people aren't quite as available as normal. But tonight we do have a special guest uh, that is going to be doing some research with a grant from the Immortality Institute. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of things recently uh, with regards to sponsoring more research. We've been giving scholarships to students last year uh, to the M Theory organization for undergrads. And this year we uh, also had a matching grant for uh, the chronic suspension of one of the members of the Institute who had terminal cancer. And we raised $8,000. And tonight uh, we're going to talk about another initiative uh, from the Institute. As I mentioned, as I previewed already, um, we are again starting a matching grant for $8,000 to study laser ablation of lipofuscin. And if you don't know exactly what that is, well, you're going to find out in just a bit because tonight we do have a young researcher uh, who's just started with the SENS Foundation uh, named Nason Schooler, and he has done some research on lipofuscin in the past with uh, roundworms and proposes to do some research uh, in uh, the future now, in the near future, uh, hopefully. Uh, shedding some light on how lipofuscin affects aging and lifespan. And with that, I would like to bring to the program our special guest tonight, Mr. Nason Schooler. Good evening. Good evening. Well, it's wonderful to have you here uh, tonight, and I'm going to put up a little picture of Nason for the viewers uh, here, and I want to remind everyone that as we go through our interview with Mr. Schooler tonight, please feel free to ask any questions in the text chat. And I did want to mention also that anyone uh, in the text chat, if you want to participate, you have to register uh, with the Ustream. It, in the past, you could just pop on in and ask any questions, but now you have to actually have a free account registered with Ustream. So if you're sitting by and you're like, hey, I can't ask any questions right now, uh, do your registration. Okay. I'm going to get here uh, with uh, Nason Schooler into the interview, and the first thing I would like to know is just a little background of yourself, if you could give us the bullet point biography, autobiography, let's say, of, of what you've done uh, in your life so far, as far, uh, you know, with research and, and where you've gone to school, uh, a little background information. Okay, sure. Uh, in the late 90s, I was uh, working on my bachelor's degree in computer science, and on the side, I was keeping track of the, some of the aging research that was being done. And uh, some things that were really remarkable then were being done with fruit flies. They were getting them to live uh, multiple times in normal lifespan and things. And uh, that was kind of a touchstone for me. I like, it was really amazed that that was possible. That was kind of the thing that, that really opened this whole area up for me. So uh, at that point, I kept the uh, science thing in the back of my mind, you know, the life sciences. And uh, once I graduated from uh, computer science with my bachelor's degree, I, uh, you know, really started to think more seriously about going into the life sciences and doing some aging research myself. So uh, to make a long story short, uh, here I am. I've now got a master's degree in uh, pharmacology and toxicology from the University of Louisville. Uh, just completed last December. And um, it's been a real interesting ride to get here. Okay. Well, thank you for that uh, little background information. And also, uh, at uh, during your uh, master's uh, degree, you did some research on uh, nematodes and lipofuscin, correct? Yeah. Uh, with roundworms. Yeah. Uh, and could you explain a little bit of that? What you've seen as a you know a preliminary uh, you know indication here of how uh, we can perhaps clear lipofuscin from uh, human cells, worm cells, and, and what effect it might have on lifespan, and just what you've studied so far. Sure. Uh, 
Well, at this point, we were really looking at uh, removing this substance, of course, because it's thought to be toxic, and uh, we're using the worms as a model. And I did get uh, in another person's laser lab, I got set up and did some initial treatments with worms. Uh, that was with a green laser, but it was still a pulsed laser, so it had some of the uh, some of the parameters that were good for doing what we wanted it to do. And I was amazed at how uh, resilient the worms were. Now, these worms are primarily uh, post-mitotic, and they're not very good at rejuvenating themselves if they get damaged okay. once they've reached maturity. So it was encouraging to see that you could use a fair amount of power without causing immediate uh, observable damage to the younger worms, the ones that were adults but still had, you know, maybe about midlife. Um, and, and at the same time, with the older worms, the exact same treatment levels that were harmless to younger worms, the older worms, they would actually physically disrupt the worm. You know, and that's, that's a sign that you're using, you know, you're doing way too much damage. Uh, but that tells you right there that there's something about the older worms that uh, is different that we are suddenly affecting, that we were not affecting before. And that, that was a really encouraging result, uh, because that shows us that the pigments that do accumulate with age, uh, they are able to be affected by the laser, and it's just up to us to find uh, how we can optimize that, how okay. do we treat them. Yeah, like just a, a little layman's uh, uh, perspective here, I'll just uh, mention also for any viewers out there or any listeners in the future who are wondering what uh, lipofiscin is and what we're talking about, it's a type of indigestible junk that builds up in our cells throughout life and it's most commonly uh, known as the stuff that gives age spots their color. Uh, and it, it's, I, you know, what the chemistry of lipofiscin, I'm not so uh, up on. Uh, maybe, uh, Nason, you could give us a little, uh, you know, what makes up uh, lipofiscin? Yeah, there's a very simple explanation. Uh, if you, you, first of all, have to understand that the cell, your average cell in the human body and in any, any organism pretty much that's uh, multicellular, the average cell recycles itself. This is something that you don't really get in your initial textbook biology when you're learning it. Sure don't. The cell, the, the cell will turn over almost everything that's that's not in the nucleus. Uh, within a fairly, you know, a number of weeks, everything is turned over. Um, and that is very important. That means basically the cell resets itself back to square one uh, every few weeks. And it also means nothing can go wrong unless there's something that that cell cannot recycle. It can't break down. And that's where this this whole theory surrounding uh, lipofusin comes in, because uh, the idea is, since the substance is not degradable, gee, maybe that's a problem. And, and sure enough, the more we've looked into it, the more we've seen that uh, not only does it interfere with the cell's ability to recycle itself and keep itself young, uh, the substance is also toxic, and it also creates its own formation. It catalyzes its own formation. So uh, once you've got a fair amount, it's going to build up really quickly beyond that. So it, you know, it, within our uh, metabolism uh, throughout life, uh, you know, lipofiscin, it's not like it's being built in large quantities or it's being, uh, you know, uh, created in large quantities every single day. Uh, right. But it's just in tiny amounts that ends up building up throughout life and the theory is this is highly correlated with age-related disease because after it builds up enough in your cells it, it just disrupts everything every it, like you mentioned the, the cell turnover um, and, and rejuvenation pathways um, become blocked that's the theory correct I mean basically that's a layman's uh, sure, explanation. sure. okay and the more you look into it, the more you see that every single, just about every single manifestation we see with aging, you know, if you're talking about DNA damage, there gets to be more DNA damage. There gets to be more oxidative damage in the cell. Uh, there gets to be more defective mitochondria.